I think the best place to start when we're going to be talking about cell division is talking about why do cells divide. You could also ask when and how they divide. You could ask what happens when they don't divide. You could happen. You could ask what happens when they divide too often. Um, what ha what brings them to the end of their life? There's lots and lots of questions that you can think about when you think about cell division. But getting back to why do cells divide? Cells divide for a couple of reasons. First is for reproduction. Bacteria and amoebas reproduce asexually. They copy themselves in order to reproduce. Eukaryotes need cell division to grow because they have to maintain those small cells for surface area to volume ratio and in order to repair and replace damaged cells. Like I said before, prokaryotes reproduce asexually through a process called binary fission and eukaryotes use something called mitosis. And this is also asexual reproduction. It's a cloning process. The cells are going to make an exact copy of themselves. Whereas meiosis cuts the genetic material in half, allowing for the production of reproductive cells and allowing for sexual reproduction. So that will be a later set of screencasts. We're going to focus on mitosis during this lesson. The key thing about the timing of cell division is cells only need to divide when and if they're needed. So uncontrolled cell growth, very simply, leads to cancer, and so our survival depends on controlling the growth of cells. So how do cells know when to divide and how do they prepare for division? Well, those are the things we're going to be talking about. The basics are that they need a signal and they actually receive a number of signals so that division only happens when the circumstances are just right. And they have to copy their DNA before they can divide so that each cell gets a full copy of the genetic material. During cell division, Pretty much the basics are that the cell's contents must be equally distributed. They have to get exactly half the genetic material, and it has to be a complete set of chromosomes, not just a mixture of chromosomes that is, you know, sort of half. This is a very exact process. There's lots of checkpoints and controls along the way to make sure that this happens in a very orderly fashion. All of these changes that take place in the cell as the cell is going through its lifespan are described by something called the cell cycle. All cells, whether they're going to divide or not, begin or exist in a phase called interphase. A cell that will divide goes through three sub-stages of interphase, and those are G1, S, and G2. A cell that does not divide is said to be in G0. Once the cell moves out of G1, it's destined to complete the cell cycle. So this is sort of like a point of no return. If you move out of G1 and you move into S phase, the cell needs to complete the process of division and go through both interphase and mitosis. Now why is S phase so critical? Well, during interphase, G stands for gap because very little is going on that's unique to the cell. The cell is just living its life, growing and preparing for division by making copies of all those things that it's going to need, all those organelles and non-chromosomal parts of the cell. During S phase, that stands for DNA synthesis, and that's when the DNA is going to be replicated. G2 is more growth, more preparation for division, but this is especially when all the checks happen, so it's another big checkpoint phase. Um, so the cell checks to make sure things are okay before it moves into S because then it's destined to divide and it makes sure it's ready for division before it moves out of G2 and into mitosis. If the DNA is mutated, those mutations will only be passed on to offspring if they're in the germ cells and those are the cells destined to become reproductive cells. What we're talking about in mitosis is the division of somatic cells, which are all your other body cells. 
and mutations to those cells are only going to exist in the organism. But any mistakes that happen during S phase become changes to the sequence of DNA that either will be in the individual organism or passed on to its offspring.